Great. Thank you for joining us for our webinar with RSpace and Protocols.io. Uh, this webinar is about utilizing the Protocols.io and RSpace integration and overall uh, imp improving efficiency in the lab. My name is Alex Razi. I'm a designer at Protocols.io. Uh, but most importantly, I'd like to introduce you to Anita Brolux, Director of Outreach at Protocols.io, and Rob Day, Head of Sales and Product at RSpace. Rob has more than 15 years of experience in the electronic lab notebooks uh, sales, and he is now leading sales at RSpace. Anita has been at Protocols.io for uh, about three years and has a background in science and has transitioned over to the tech world through Protocols.io, where she's the director of outreach. So a little bit about RSpace. RSpace is a modern, um, highly connected and extensible ELN and research data management system. RSpace allows you to collect, protect, and manage and share your data and work history from bench to archive and beyond. Out of the box, RSpace features a range of integrations with data tools you already use, as well as a powerful API that lets you push and pull data in and out of the system, turning RSpace into a powerful data hub for your lab and research uh, organization. There's free versions, uh, community versions of RSpace available for anyone to try. You can check that out at community.researchspace.com. And we'll actually be sharing that link and email addresses uh, a little bit later uh, as well. A quick intro to protocols.io. Uh, protocols.io is a tool for uh, researchers to create protocols and share and even publish uh, their protocols and get a DOI. Um, there's a variety of different tools that you can use in the editor and has integrations through a couple different platforms. One thing to notice is that Protocols.io is a great place for open access protocols uh, and, and method and collaboration sharing, but also uh, there's a private side. So you can have private protocols work uh, for, um, for collaboration with your team. Now, before we get started, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, um, the premise for today. Um, a couple notes is that we are recording this webinar, and so we'll have a recording of it. And if you have any questions, uh, you could feel free to add them into the QA section, and we'll be answering them uh, later. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, that's at the, at the bottom, there's a QA feature. Go ahead and click that button, and then you'll be able to go into a, a little dialog box that lets you um, enter questions, and we'll be getting to those questions at the end. Now, one thing that I would like to um, prepare for us today is that um, we're actually gonna go through um, a, a scenario. So two colleagues uh, who are working in the lab are trying to find a protocol uh, that works well for their experience. So we're gonna jump right into the dialogue and here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Rob Day. I'm head of sales and products for Research Space. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you now so that we can see the RSpace uh, interface. Uh, hopefully everybody can see that. Uh, Anita, can you see that? Yes, I can see it. All right, great. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my unique credentials for this system. And that's going to take me to an area called the workspace of our space, which is sort of analogous to the desktop of my computer, where I'm going to keep various different documents and studies that I'm currently working with. At the top of my list here, you can see that I have a notebook containing some documents that are the beginnings of, an, of a study that I'm doing on COVID-19. So uh, there are a few different uh, pages here. There are some pages talking about my background in literature and uh, I have a page documenting my, some of my interactions with the IRB process for this study. But I'm going to jump into this experimental write-up for this first pilot that I've been doing where I've been trying to do some initial extractions of RNA and uh, some amplification of that. And of course, you know, uh, in a way that sort of much reminds me of my days in grad school, uh, I'm not really having a lot of success. My amplification is not working. I don't know why. I just can't get this process to work. And, uh, you know, I'm a busy uh, lab manager, so I don't really have a lot of time to optimize this protocol and dig in deeper. 
Luckily though, our space has the ability to be able to access with a range of different external tools that you probably already work with in your lab, including things like protocols.io. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reach out to my colleague Anita via Slack, which is another tool that we actually integrate with. But for now, I'll just go ahead and um, open up Slack and, uh, and paste in a message to my colleague Anita. I know that she's done some work in this area before and I've worked with her before and I've always found Anita pretty smart and cooperative. So I'm just going to save myself a lot of time here by sending a quick message to Anita via Slack to see if she can help me with this uh, uh, protocol that I can't seem to get to work. And perhaps maybe she can suggest one that will work better for me. Hi Rob, um, I think I have something for you that might be helping and um, as we heard in the beginning, um, protocols.io is um, one part of protocols.io is this open access repository. Right now there are about 7,000 public protocols on protocols.io on a whole bunch of different um, research fields. So there's a large variety and um, in disciplines and there's a lot of methods available. If you're new to the platform, a good place to always start out is the welcome page. So if you go to protocols.io slash welcome, you'll see our feature protocols, but also you have the ability to search for protocols by just putting a keyword in and then you'll be going through, um, you'll be guided to uh, a results page and you can just see everything that's available. But I think I did see something that might work for Rob in our um, coronavirus method development community here. Um, and this is an open community. So this is a community that researchers can just join and they can start collaborating, sharing their methods, starting discussions, add resources for others, and everything that would be um, helpful for a method-centered collaboration. And if you want to search for publications in that group, you would go to the publications tab. And here I can actually search, um, either I can just look through it or I can search by category or I can type a keyword in here. And if I just type RNA, for example, I'll get all the results that have RNA in their title. And I think this is the method that I was looking at that I think might be working for Rob. So if I click on this, I'll be able to see the method. And this method looks good. And one thing I wanted to note here is that the special thing about the protocols and protocols that I know is that there are not static PDFs, but are interactive and dynamic protocols. And one thing you'll notice that the methods are um, presented in an easy to follow step-by-step -step way. So here you can see like little um, section titles and like the steps are individual steps rather than just having like one long, hard to understand um, text block. And if I'm looking at this method, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm just going to check which kind of materials they use. And I think they're using a, a kit from Roche, but I know that Rob does not have that available in his lab, um, but he does have a Sigma kit. So what I'm going to do is I will create what we call a fork. And I can create a fork of any public protocol. And that will allow me to um, take that method and really um, optimize it and just like make changes in a way that would be good for me or for Rob in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and click um, fork and then it will ask me to create a fork and I'll call this um, fork Rob. So I'll just add this to the title so Rob knows that this is for him. Um, and then I can select a folder where I want to place this in. So I'm just going to put it into my files for now and then I will continue. And now I'm asked if I would like to only view the fork or if I want to edit a fork. And I do want to make some changes. So I will click um, edit. And so now I'm in the edit mode for that protocol. And now I can go ahead and make the changes that I want to make through this. Um, so one thing I wanted to change is I want to change this material here. So this won't be the Roche kit. I will add a new one actually from um, Sigma. Click save. And then I will delete this one so there's no confusion. And then I think I also saw it in the steps. So I'll make a quick change here.
And then the rest should be looking pretty good. Um, so I'll just quickly see how this looks like in the view. And we made the changes and I will go ahead and send this to Rob on Slack. So I'm saying, hi Rob, this protocol might work for you. And I'll just paste the link in here. And then it will ask me, it will say, um, Okay, so, so here's the link for the new protocol. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this protocol to Rob because I'm pretty sure that it will work. So I'll just, um, what is this, this one? I'll tr click transfer and I can find Rob here by just typing his name. Or not. <laughs> oh no, there he is. Sorry about that. I can say, I can add a little note here. I'll just say, hi Rob, this might work. And I'll transfer this. And then Rob should be able to see it in his our space now. Okay, so I'm going to reshare my screen. So uh, I I can see right away from Slack that uh, that um, our space has communicate that uh, Anita has communicated with me. I'm going to move the Slack window out of the way for now. So I'm pretty excited now because I know that there's uh, there's this new protocol that's available to me that's going to hopefully work a little better for me. So I'm going to double click on the, uh, this particular document here to put it into edit mode. And I'm going to go to my method section and I'm just going to delete this uh, protocol here that, you know, I'm sort of mad at because it just didn't work at all. So I'll just get rid of it completely. I'm uh, just deleting everything in here. And now because Anita has already shared that protocol from protocols.io with me, and because Anita has transferred ownership to me, when I go ahead and click on the protocols.io icon in the toolbar, and I look at my own uh, private uh, uh, protocols that I have access to, right away I can see here the one that um, Anita just basically shared with me and made available to me immediately. So I'm going to select that and say import. Now you'll notice while I'm here that I could have done some other things too if I'd wanted to, I could from here have searched the entire public repository of available protocols.io protocols, or I could have looked at just the protocols that are mine that I've shared and made public, or I could have looked at protocols that have been shared with me. But right now I'm looking at my own personal protocols that are stored in protocols.io, including the one that uh, Anita just transferred to me so that I have control of this one now. So I'm going to select that and say import. And what's nice about this now is I don't have to kind of muck around um, opening this up and copying and pasting out the text or retyping anything. I'm just going to leave this in here, right? As it is, as a link that's eventually, essentially it's going to um, uh, reference this protocol that I'm going to use in this particular experiment today. And I can even paste in something saying that this is the, uh, this is the most current version. Okay, so now if I save this and I go ahead and I click on that link that I just embedded in this document, it will take me to a fully editable internalized copy of that protocol that has now been imported and added to RSpace. So this is a fully editable document that's inside of RSpace. And if I want to here, I can actually go ahead now and make um, additional changes to this to fine tune it for my own particular needs. So I could add uh, additional details or I could add comments that somehow make this uh, protocol more useful to me. So I could say um, this came from Anita and it seems to work well for her. And now I can go ahead and uh, save those changes if I want to by just going ahead and saying save here. What's also nice about this too as well now is if I uh, go to uh, a little higher up in my hierarchy, uh, this protocol has been added to a folder inside our space called imports. And you can see that inside of that folder, I actually have a range of other protocols that I've previously imported in protocols.io. One of the things that I can do from here now is if I go ahead and I uh, select that protocol and I say I'd like to look at its revisions, I can see the entire revision history of this document here. So our space is a fully 21 CFR 11 compliant system, which means all versions of everything are basically kept forever. And one of the things that I can do here is I could click view to look at these different versions if I wanted to. 
but I can also go ahead and I can right click on any particular specific version. Like this is, this is the original that Anita originally sent me. And I'm going to say, I'd like to uh, copy th that link. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the workspace and reopen that study. Okay, so the link that you see uh, here is pointing at the most recent version of the protocol that's inside of our space. So this is in fact a link now that's pointing at the one that I made a comment on saying that this was given to me by Anita. But if I want to, I can also sort of flesh this out a little bit so that I don't get confused in the future and I understand exactly what it was that Anita sent me. I can even do something like this. I can go ahead and say, um, this is the original version from Anita. And then I can go ahead and paste in uh, that link that I copied earlier. And you'll see there's a slight difference between these two links. This one has a little arrow next to it indicating that this will always be the latest version of that protocol. But this one has a little clock icon next to it indicating that this is a specific and static version of that protocol exactly as it was when it was first given to me by Anita. So if I need to, I can quickly actually refer to these two different protocols to quickly compare them to make sure that there's uh, nothing in here that's uh, radically or unexpectedly different from what An Anita originally sent me. All right, so now I can go ahead and I can run this experiment. And uh, hopefully when I do it this time, uh, I can go ahead now and edit the results here. I can get rid of that horrible gel where I couldn't see anything at all. And instead I can just say insert from gallery and I can perhaps uh, select a more uh, representative gel that kind of shows that my application, that my uh, uh, PCR amplification works. So there's much rejoicing. I'm happy. I can get rid of this comment here and I can sort of go on with my life. Furthermore, because I'm, I'm so happy about this now and because that collaboration with Anita seemed to work out well, what I'd really like to do now is I know she's already using our space on this particular server. And so I'd like to invite her to join my lab so that we can collaborate further on this experiment so that she can see the results of this, this uh, experiment that we've just performed. So what I'll do is I'll click on the Slack icon right here and I'll say, hey, Anita, I am going to invite you to join my lab so that we can so we can collaborate on this document and you notice that I picked a channel here already that I know Anita is anal is uh, is watching on slack so now I can go ahead and I can just say send and that will automatically send a uh, a notification to Slack. So if I open up my Slack window again now, and I go to the uh, the projects channel, you can actually see here's a message that I just sent Anita saying, hey Anita, I'm going to invite you to join my lab so that we can collaborate on this document. And then here's a link that points back to the exact document. She won't be able to see that until she's actually joined my lab. So in order to do that, I could actually just go to the my RSpace area and I could go to uh, my lab groups and I could say, hey, I'd like to, uh, I'm going to uh, pick a particular lab that I would like to uh, add Anita to. I'm gonna say I'd like to add as my main research lab. And now I can just click invite and I can search for Anita here. Select her and uh, add her to my lab and say invite. And so that sent an invitation to Anita then to allow her to join my lab too as well, which would mean that we'd be allowed to, we'd be able to collaborate more closely on that particular experimental procedure that we were just working on and that she just improved for me by sharing that great protocol with me. Great, okay. thank you, Rob. Thanks for the invitation. I'm glad that the protocol worked out for you. Great. So we can now transition over to a QA and we have some great questions uh, coming in here. So if you do have a question, feel free to put it in the QA section. And we have um, a couple questions here. The first question that we'll go over um, is, uh, do you need to have permission from the author to make a fork? Can anyone make a fork of any protocol? I think that's related to protocols.io. Maybe Anita, you want to answer that one? Sure, that's a good question. And 
yeah, you do not need permission from anybody to create a fork. And if you do create a fork um, of a protocol, if you create a fork of a public protocol or private protocol, um, a fork is kind of like a copy, but to make sure that everybody knows where this protocol originated from, you will see a little um, underneath the title of each fork, you'll see a little um, link that says this protocol was forked from this and that protocol. So that way, um, always we guarantee that the original author of a protocol still gets credit and people can just take those protocols and then tweak it to their needs. But yeah, you do not need permission from anybody to create forks of protocols. Great. We have another question from, uh, from Claire. Uh, could you send an example, uh, could you send a message on chat systems other than Slack, for example, Microsoft Teams? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, RSpace supports integration with Slack as well as MS Teams and also, in fact, Google Hangouts do as well. Okay, great. And um, another question regarding those Slack integrations, and then we'll get back to the other questions, so I'll jump one. It says, how long does it take to set up the Slack integrations, and do you need to make the, integra do you need to make the protocols.io and RSpace integrations separately? So in our space, those integrations are set up typically through the apps tab, which I could show you very easily. And they're, they're typically extremely easy to set up. There are one or two that do require vendor permission, but usually we can get that in 24 hours or less to go ahead and allow that uh, collaboration to occur. Others can be established instantly just by turning them on and off. So under the apps tab here, you can see that we have uh, a range of different integrations, including with protocols.io, with Chemaxon chemistry tools, Ignite, Dropbox, and Box are all uh, external data stores. Uh, Evernote, that's a note-taking system we can integrate with. Uh, OneDrive and Google Drive you're all familiar with. Slack, MS Teams, and Google Chats. We can also integrate with Mendeley, Dataverse, GitHub, Figshare. Um, our sample tracking system called eCats, which actually is about to be fully integrated into our space. So this particular integration will sort of go away soon because it's being uh, ingested into the main system own cloud and dspace these are all things that we integrate with out of the box we can make other integrations or you can make your own integrations very quickly using our free accessible public api that every user can use uh, to, to turn on a particular integration usually it's just simply as simple as clicking on the icon and then going ahead and clicking uh, enable you can see this one's already enabled so if i click disable that would turn it off and in this case there's a little bit of extra data that's needed you're just required to enter the slack team name and the channel you'd like to send uh, your post to and that's it, you say save, and then you're ready to go with Slack. Okay, great. And then, Anita, do you have any insight on how long it takes to integrate the protocols IO uh, integration? Um, not exactly, but we are integrated with a whole bunch of tools too. A lot of them are similar um, to the ones with our space. So you, we are integrated with um, all like Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, OneDrive, and then also you saw the Slack integration. Um, and then we also are, um, you can connect your ORCID ID to your protocols.io profile. So for example, which is great if you're publishing a protocol, it will automatically show up on your ORCID, um, ORCID ID, ORCID, I never know how to say <laughs> ORCID profile. Um, but yeah, those are kind of like the main integrations that protocols.io has. Okay, great. Uh, and the next question is that if you export a PDF from our space, uh, does the protocol also show up there? Uh, and it's kind of a two part question because it says, how does it work when you reference the protocol? And if you add the reference for versions, do they both appear? That is a fabulous question. Again, once again, I'll actually share my screen. That's the easiest way to show that. Uh, the short answer is yes and yes. In fact, the answer to almost any question involving our space is usually yes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the document we are working with today. One of the things I can do with that document is I can go ahead and I can certainly uh, export that document as a PDF very easily by just clicking on the export button and saying I'd like to go ahead and export that as a PDF. And now it'll ask me what I want to include. I'll just say everything for now. And that's going to generate a PDF of that page. So that PDF is stored in a special area called the gallery. And I can access that exported PDF here. And if I want to, I can download it or I can view it in a new tab so that I can see it in full size. So you can see here this PDF includes a couple of interesting items. It includes uh, automatically includes a link back to the original parent document in our space. And, uh, and here are the links to those um, uh, 
protocols.io documents that are in our space. So this is just a link currently inside this PDF. However, if I want to go ahead and actually see the PDF for that protocol itself, I can do that very easily too. And the way that I would do that is I will just go to the page that has that, P that uh, protocol on it. So I can go back to my study. I can click on the link to the protocol right here. And then once I can see the protocol, once again, I can say, I'd like to export that and turn it into a PDF to go ahead and uh, generate a PDF for that the same way as I did with the parent document that the link was sitting on. So yes, you can uh, absolutely export the, uh, the protocol itself as a PDF at any time. Okay, great. We have a couple more questions and we'll try to get to them uh, before uh, we hit time. Uh, but one of them is, have you developed any DMPs or uh, data management plan in our space? Um, we've worked with organizations that have developed data management plans for use at their university, but we, uh, we generally leave that to the user themselves because the content of those data management plans tends to vary significantly by organization and nation. And we are a truly global company that has uh, deployments of our space all over the world. Uh, different nationalities have uh, dramatically different requirements for what's going to be in that data management plan. So generally, although we're happy to work with universities or labs to help them build a DMP, um, we don't actually have any that we specifically point you at, um, simply because there's so much variation between labs, organizations, and, and countries. Great. And another question here, if you develop or make tweaks to a protocol in our space uh, and get it working well and then want to publish it on protocols.io, can you push the final product back to protocols IO from our space? I'm absolutely sure that you can with a little bit of work. Um, I've not actually done that myself, honestly, but uh, our space is so well connected and its API is uh, very cooperative with the APIs of other products. I don't think it would be at all difficult to do that. Great, and two more questions here. Uh, do you have to be part of the protocols.io page to be able to search for protocols on that page? And I think by page, they mean group or workspace. Um, do you have to be part of the, no, um, you can, any user anywhere in our space on any server, whether it's this server or whether you are working with the, uh, the free public server, uh, which is called our space community edition. It looks like this, by the way, at community.researchbase.com. Any user can go ahead and search the protocols.io database. And if you search the public area, you'll be searching all protocols that are available in the public area of protocols.io. So uh, if you'd like to try that for self, you absolutely can. Just go to community.researchbase.com, either log in with Google or sign up manually with your email address. And then right away, you'll be able to create, create new documents in our space. And you can try inserting protocols.io protocols into those documents for yourself. Great. And we have one last question regarding, it looks like it's regarding integrations. Um, and they ask, uh, could I add Zotero to use instead of Mendeley? That, that's a great question. We have actually looked at Zotero a couple of times. Um, we don't have it added yet as an integration out of the box. It's absolutely on our roadmap to attempt to add that at some point. If Zotero has an API, which I'm sure it does, you could probably very easily build that integration yourself using uh, our API and theirs. Um, if you have more questions about that, you're welcome to contact us separately and we can talk some more about uh, how that might work. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this last slide with the email uh, address for both Rob and Anita. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out directly. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.